Hi everyone, welcome to this series of videos about continuous improvement and business management. My name is Isan and I am a Lean Six Sigma Black Belt Certified and the founder of 3i Solution Consulting. So today we are going to explore the powerful methodology of Lean and Lean Six Sigma and we will share why they are essential tools in modern business. Whether you are looking to enhance efficiency, reduce waste or improve quality, you are in the right place. So before we dive in, I have a little request. If you are passionate about continuous learning and professional growth, then do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and turn on the not notifications. This way you won't miss any of our education content. And if you know someone who would benefit from this knowledge, feel free to share our video with them. Remember, knowledge shared is knowledge multiplied. Now let's start on our video about Lean and Lean Six Sigma. So first of all, let's start with the history of Lean Six Sigma. So Lean and Lean Six Sigma have evolved over the last 150 plus years based upon performance improvement methods, technique tools, proven to increase operational effectiveness and efficiency. I will not cover every person in this slide. The, but they all contribute to Lean and Lean Six Sigma as we know it today. I will talk about Ford. Uh, Henry Ford has developed uh, upon the work from uh, Eli Whitney, Frederick Tyler, and others. And Ford is credited for the continuous assembly line to mass production. So they produce the T model in mass production. So Ford made car affordable to a lot of people by making uh, or by uh, building like mass production, they were able to reduce their costs and eventually they were able to cascade this cost to the customer and lowering the price to make the car affordable to a lot of people. So while uh, Ford was doing great, uh, Toyota at that time was not. So what happened, Toyota senior management traveled to US to understand how Ford is conducting business. After returning to Japan, they realized that they cannot do mass production for different reasons. So the first one is the, the Japanese market was small comparatively to the US. The second thing is the Japanese vehicle market was highly diverse. So people like small car, big car, luxury or truck. So it was a kind of a highly diverse, diverse market. And third, the end, which is the most important one is the Japanese economy was damaged after the second world war. And it was difficult to access to uh, capital in order to buy uh, to buy uh, western technology so the uh, so what they did so they adjust what they learned from from toyota to their environment uh, and they create what they develop automation uh, toyota pro toyota production system and so on so they develop a methodology or framework that allow them to catch up with the uh, the uh, economy or the uh, auto industry in the us in in few years so the last person that I would like to talk about is, is uh, uh, James Womack. So James Womack was a professor of, uh, at the MIT uh, and uh, James Womack revised, uh, revived how uh, uh, the lean methodology by uh, studying the Japanese, the Japanese uh, manufacturers. And he wrote the book called The Machine That Changed the World. And in fact, it did change how the way manufacturing was conducted in the US and in Europe. So now let's dive in into a quick introduction about lean. So what is lean? Well, lean basically, it's a way of thinking. It's aimed to uh, simplify our processes. We have to look our, on our processes and see uh, the step or the task that add value and the one that doesn't add value. So we're gonna focus only on what add value and remove the one that doesn't add value. By doing that, we are speeding up our process processes and we are making our processes more efficient and effective. So uh, our time is the most important and valuable resources and we need to treasure it. So uh, Peter Dr uh, Drucker, uh, uh, one of the management gurus said, there is nothing quite uh, so useless as doing something with great efficiency that shouldn't be done in the first place. So we have to focus only on what add value and removing what does not add value. So it doesn't, the, there is no point of being efficient on things that doesn't need to be done in the first place. 
So we did talk previously about the lean principle from James Womack, and he articulated those five principles. So first of all, identify the value. So we have to look on from the customer perspective, what they need. So uh, first of all, instead of providing something that the customer uh, that, uh, will not need, so we, we identify the value and we talk to our uh, customer, what we call it, the voice of a customer to identify what they need so that we can provide them what they need. And the second principle was map the value stream. So we want to make sure that we are uh, mapping our process, that it's visible so that we can see what add value and what doesn't add value. So the step in our process doesn't add value. We need to, we can remove it and just only focus on what add value. The third principle, which is uh, create flow. So we want to make sure that our process is seamless, seamless from one step to another so that there is no, we don't stop between processes. So uh, if we stop between processes, we are creating more non-add value. We stop either because we need uh, validation or approval or we are needing the, the materials or information. So by streaming the process and it's go from one step to another without going back and forth, we are making our process more efficient and more effective and we are uh, reduce, reducing the time that we're going to execute our process from end to end. The fourth principle, which is establish the poll. As we did discuss in the history for the did mass production, what they, what they did, so they produce too many cars and they push it to the market. So in order to reduce the cost, at that time was, was, was a good thing to do. It's to build uh, too many cars and the cost will go down so that we can sell it in with a cheaper price so that can be affordable to a lot of people. However, in our dynamic environment that we live in today, so we need to receive the, or we need to produce the information or the product or the service when the customer need it. So for instance, if we build the report, uh, we need to, to do a report monthly, but if we, we build it a couple of days or a couple of weeks before it's needed, probably the information that will be in, this, in that report will be obsolete. Poll system, we are providing the customer what they need when they need it. And of course, the, 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 the fifth principle, which is seeking per perfection. We need all the time to look in how we can improve our process. Remember, continuous improvement is a journey, it's not a destination. You improve it in a way that can make sense and you can adjust it to, be, uh, to seek this perfection and to improve your process every time. So now let's talk about what is Six Sigma. So Six Sigma, basically, it's focused on precision and consistency. We need to be reliable. We don't need to have a variability in our process. So we need to make sure that we are precise on our product so we, there is no defect. And we are consistent on providing the same thing over and over again. Because if, if we mess or our process is, is not consistent, we probably will produce product that the, the outside of the, the uh, customer uh, expectation or requirement, which will become a defect. So Lean Six Sigma, it's basically being reducing our variability. So we're gonna produce the, the product needed when it's needed with the quantity needed with, with the spe uh, specification needed. So now we're gonna talk about what is Lean Six Sigma. So basically Lean Six Sigma is the combination of both methodology, the Lean and Six Sigma. So Lean focus on improving the delay. So if we remove non-add value task, which means we are uh, speeding up our processes, we are improving our time or our uh, execution of our process. And, and Six Sigma, we are basically focusing on having less variability. So we, we are consistent and we are reliable on developing or producing the service or, or the product that the customer wants with with the, the quality required. So uh, by doing that, we are, we, are, uh, we are meeting the customer needs, we are meeting the shareholders' uh, needs, and we are meeting the customer and the employee and the company needs. So because if we are speeding our processes, so we are focusing only what add value, which means we are producing, producing more with less, we are uh, reducing the cost, 
and we are reducing the defect and the quality which we, we are making the customer happy and the employee is happy because they are doing the work that needs to be done in order to achieve uh, to achieve the greater result. So the, the Lean Six Sigma is a combination of those two methodology for higher uh, performance and higher effic efficiency and effectiveness. So as you can see here, so Lean is reducing delay. It's the time that we execute our processes from, from end to end. And Six Sigma is up improving our quality. So by doing those two, we are improving our productivity, we are reducing our cost, and we are satisfying our customers. So that's how powerful and important the Lean Six Sigma is. So how we know or how we choose a project that meet the Lean Six Sigma uh, methodology, because not every project fit the Lean Six Sigma methodology because if you know the solution, just go and do it. But Lean Six Sigma, it's done when, when you don't know the solution or if you know the solution that it's you need a robust implementation. So by following the framework, the Lean Six Sigma framework, it's allow you or provide you all the tools and the techniques so that the solution will be implemented successfully and will be consistent on executing the same process over and over again. So first of all, in order to define which project we need to do, so we need to be strategic to look, to look at the strategy objective of the organization. So what do we need to achieve? Are we trying to increase our production? Are we trying to increase our uh, share of the market. So we have to have some vision or strategic objective at the organization level. And after that, we're going to identify the process that help us to achieve this strategy and see which processes they have high impact on the, the factor of success that we need to in order to meet our strategic objective. And finally, when we identify uh, those processes uh, that must need to be improved in order to achieve uh, our uh, strategic objective, we need to focus on those uh, those projects or those initiatives. And finally, we have to develop the team. Each project will have its own team in order to meet the organization's strategic objective. So this is the roadmap about the Lean uh, Six Sigma methodology. And this uh, the Lean Six Sigma methodology, we call this methodology DEMIAC, which is the Define, Measure, Analyze, improve and control. And each phase has its objective and we cannot move to the new phase without meeting the objective of the previous, uh, the previous phase. And that's with what's important about uh, the, the, the Lean Six Sigma as great tools in continuous improvement. So first of all, we have to identify where, what we are trying to solve. So based on the strategic objective, we're gonna define what, what what what's the problem? Why are not how we can meet those strategic objectives? So we have to talk about to talk to stakeholders. So we have to listen to the voice of the customer. So the voice of the customer most of the time, well, we need to uh, increase uh, market share. We need to in increase production, but how much? So we need to be uh, to be very specific and what we call it uh, CTQ or critical to quality. We have to convert this voice of customer to something measurable so that we need to know when we achieve those results. So we do the KPI, we're gonna improve it by 10%, 20%, whatever. But, and, and we need those KPI to measure, are we achieving that? And again, so the, the Lean Six Sigma methodology or, or the continuous improvement, it's like uh, it's input, it's transformation of input to output. So first of all, we need to look at uh, the input that we put in our process or the process itself and how they have an impact on our output, the desired strategic objective. So we focus on few of them because we have uh, limited resources, limited time, limited money. So we have to focus on the one they have higher return on in investment so that we call them uh, trivial few. So the few input that they have impact on our, our output. And some of those inputs are uh, people that they are working. So are they qualified? Do they have the skills? Do they have the know-how to perform the work? If not, 
what need to be done? Do they need training? Do they need something that can help them to achieve the desired result? Some of this could be a machine or material. So if we are trying to develop, to provide the reporting, so when we need this information, we need to make sure that the database is, is accurate, is functioning it's it's a, a, a we can access to it whenever we need so or if we have a machine that the machine it's not uh, that's uh, that, that it's working in good condition so all of those things can impact our output information or material that we require so if we have a bad material so we are producing bad product or bad service. So we need to make sure that the material that we receive or the information that we receive is good and it's accurate. Uh, like uh, those are few factors that we use as an input in our process. The process itself, is it efficient? Are, are we doing some steps or tasks in the process that doesn't require, uh, doesn't need it? So we have to remove it. So that's what we do in the define phase. We need to define the problem. If we don't know what we are solving, so the, definitely we are not making any progress. So we need to properly define our needs. And the next step, which is measure the current state. So we use tools like SciPark uh, process mapping to know what we do currently and see uh, we know what we do now so that we know where we want to be and it's easy to reach our goal but if we don't know where we are how we're gonna reach where we want to go it's like ceiling so you need you need to know your anchor you know you need to know where you are and where you are going so that you can choose the right path or the, the fastest path to achieve your goal so when we do the analyze phase, and again, each phase, as I did mention, has a toll gate or a review with stakeholder with, with, with the team and everyone so that we agree that we met those, the, the, those requirements before we move to the next, the next phase. And the other phase, the, 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 the third phase, which is analyze. So when we know what we do now, so we analyze why we do it this way. Is there a different way that we can do it and uh, to improve uh, our process or our methodology so that we can reach our goal. Some of the tools that we use, Ishikawa or the, the Fishbone, uh, the F uh, FMEA, which is the failure model and effect analysis, we use uh, 5Y. So all those tools that we can use in the analyze phase to, to know why we do what we do and is there any way that we can, so that we identify those root cause analysis that in the next phase, which is the improved phase, we can do countermeasure to improve our performance to meet our goal. So in the, inf uh, in the improved phase, we look uh, at brainstorming solution based on the root cause analysis or the, uh, the, the analyze phase about what prevents us from meeting our goal. And we do small solution or small uh, pilot projects so that we can uh, uh, make sure that what we think it's it's a problem is is really a problem or we can tweak so this pilot project will help us to test our theory or test our solution so that we cannot be, do it in a bigger scale and fail so we do it in a small scale we prove our theory and we build it or we tweak it as until we are confident so that we can have it in a bigger scale so when we do the improved phase, we go to the uh, the next phase or the final phase, which is control. So we want when we are a solution, we want to make sure that everybody is using the new solution. They are using the new the new process, and we are auditing to make sure that it's implemented properly and it's followed by everyone. So we use KPI, we use scorecard. So and we monitor that we make sure that our processes is executed as as. Uh, as intended. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that you enjoy your uh, this video. And if you do enjoy it, please subscribe to our channel, hit the notification button and share this video uh, with your friends if you think that they will benefit from that. And thank you so much again and see you in the next video.